anyways. Sergeant Steve Foster with Orange County Sheriff's Office picked that color out. Why, Mike? Jimmy, go sit in your vehicle. Okay, this is what happened. We sat down with them the first week that Metro State was going into existence. We sat down with them at the sheriff's office and we sat down with their operations unit and we talked to them and they told us, don't wear white shirts, don't have red and blue lights, and uh, don't have any words that say police or sheriff. So the judge said, please just put in some amber with your purple. And we did what the judge asked. Steve Foster picked that color out of a cattle. Jeremy. For those that don't know, we went from these shirts to a gray shirt, which is funny that what you don't know, in 2016, the lead lawyer for the Orange County Sheriff's Office, along with two of the head supervisors of the Special Operations Division, sat with myself and my attorney and at the direction of the sheriff at that current time and told us to go to the gray shirts that we were wearing. And they actually even chose it out of a catalog and said, we like these gray shirts. Please start using these instead of the yellow shirts, which matches our rain jackets. Wow. No, no, that's not what the judge says. And if you pull back those transcripts, Corporal, you'll hear that. Wait a minute. Hey, guys. Today, we are going over all of these awesome police vehicles. Are you ready? Let's get started. This first one is a police cruiser. It's a Dodge Charger Pursuit. You might see these in your neighborhood or in your city. Just your average police car, it says Metro. I don't know where that is. See, it says Dodge on the side. It's a very cool matte black with orange and blue details. You can see the lights on the top and the bumper on the front. Wow. I don't know that I've ever seen a police car in a matte black color. Usually they're shiny, but this looks really neat. Oh, and there's windows, hello. Very cool. The way the judge has said it. When we started this company, this color shirt, nobody wore it. We didn't go to the gray shirts, and and I'm sure you can pull the records because Krantz was there, Captain Chapman. They used to wear white. No, we've never worn white ever. Mm -hmm. Not a single fucking time. Okay. So don't ever put those words in my mouth, mm -hmm. Corporal. And okay. you can go ahead and get the recordings because Captain Chapman with Major Krantz. And Steve Foster, that was his name. I knew I was going to come up with it. Steve Foster, your attorney at that time, were the people that told us to leave these yellow shirts and go to the gray shirts that we started wearing while me and my attorney were sitting there recording the whole conversation. You guys were the ones that told us to put the orange in our lights, which we did, and you guys Well, were when the you ones say you guys, let's, let's clarify. I never told you that. In fact, hold on, wait. So... The judge said, please just put in some amber with your purple. And we did what the judge asked. Sergeant Steve Foster with Orange County Sheriff's Office picked that color out. Why, my Jeremy, go sit in your vehicle. Okay, so when Mr. DeWitt makes statements such as, uh, I met with, Ms. with Steve Foster or uh, the Sheriff's Office approved this and that, uh, are those statements accurate? not be accurate. I would have never approved. Nobody from the sheriff's office would have ever approved. Um, you can wear this, you can't wear that. Uh, this is allowed, this is not allowed. Okay. Uh, does the sheriff's office give legal advice to citizens like that? Absolutely not. Okay. It is what it is. And, 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 uh, handcuffs. 
I swear to God, I didn't do anything. I was on a funeral escort. And they did switch to green shirts, like I told you. They switched to green shirts so that they so they won't have white shirts because the white's too close to Metro. Sergeant, get your lieutenant, please. Anyways. Sergeant. Just because you don't like me and you have a history with me doesn't authorize you to treat me like shit. I have it on a body cam downloaded. First thing I have to do is read this preamble. Yeah. I'm Sergeant Justin Wall of the Orange County Sheriff's Office Professional Standards Section. Uh, today's date is May 19th, 2021. The current time is 9.05 a.m. Uh, this interview is being conducted at the uh, private residence uh, with the address on file. I'm interviewing, can you state your name for me? Sandy Carpenter. Um, and what is your rank and assignment? Captain of the Orange County Sheriff's Office Traffic Division. Uh, Captain Carpenter, are you aware that I'm recording this interview? Yes, I am. Has anyone threatened, coerced, or offered you any preferential treatment to give this statement? No. Are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol to maintain your testimony? No. Can you uh, raise your right hand, place you under oath? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you are to provide will be true and correct? Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, as we kind of briefly discussed, um, conducting an investigation into some allegations that were brought forward by uh, Mr. Jeremy DeWitt, uh, and you uh, may have information about that, so that's the reason why I'm here to talk to you. Um, what is your uh, current rank and your general responsibilities at the Sheriff's Office? Uh, the captain over traffic, and I've got anything from um, dignitary details when the presidents are in town or a dignitary to the daily school. Um, crossings or what have you that deputies have to respond to. Okay. And it's my understanding you're out on uh, a light duty or an act. I'm sorry, actually, I have no duty status right now. So when did that start? Uh, about February the 12th or 15th, I believe. Um, I had a heart issue and had to deal with that. And so since that date, you have not been no. back to work? I have not responded to emails. <laughs> I've done nothing that could cause stress. Okay. Um, so, with that being the case, did you have any involvement in the arrest of Mr. DeWitt on March 23rd, 2021? No, sir. Um, so, Mr. DeWitt was arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. Uh, the charge stemmed from Mr. DeWitt carrying a pepper ball in his gun belt holster. Uh, in case you weren't familiar, at, I know that uh, there's, there's been some ongoing stuff. Are you aware of any discussions in the past about Mr. DeWitt carrying a pepper ball gun in a holster in his uniform and whether or not that was illegal or illegal? Do you remember any discussions about uh, that? There's been several discussions over the past year or so about a pepper ball gun that looks like a, a handgun. Um, discussions about because of the, we had a intel bulletin at one point that I think indicated Mr. DeWitt could be a suicide by cop individual, something along those lines. There was something about um, how he might go out or something. I don't recall what the whole thing was about. That's been a good year and a half or so ago. Um, were those discussions with Sergeant Bidler or Corporal Ramsey? Yes. Was there anything specific to, I understand about the bulletin, but mm -hmm. was there anything specific about to the legality of whether or not he could or could not carry a pepper ball gun? Um, they argued that because he was a sexual offender or whatever, that he was not allowed to carry any type of weapon or firearm or what have you, and we discussed the fact that it was a pepper ball gun. Um, at one point, our discussions reached the level that unless they saw him literally violating Florida State statute in regard to uh, funeral escorts, that they would um, call patrol and let patrol take over the responsibilities of whether in fact Mr. DeWitt was in violation of Florida State statute for carrying a weapon or a firearm as a convicted felon. Okay, they would call patrol? Yes. Why was, why was that? Um, there came a point in the investigation where I, I realized that Mr. DeWitt might allege that they were being, they were targeting him individually because they were the cops that were always involved. Okay. Not taking away from their investigation, they were assigned to do an investigation on um, those illegal funeral escorts, and they are in fact illegal. There's a simple way the statute reads. Okay. So. Being assigned that, it was always Vidler and Ramsey that were dealing with 
Mr. DeWitt, every patrol deputy out there has it within their power to enforce that statute or enforce that law. But what I found was that they were constantly calling Sergeant Vidler as directed by one of the um, intel bulletins that had gone out said that if you had doubt to contact Vidler. So he was constantly being bombarded with Jeremy DeWitt, Jeremy DeWitt, Jeremy DeWitt. Okay. So I didn't want there to be the appearance or, or the um, anything that looked improper for the agency as far as it always being the same two guys that had to deal with Jeremy DeWitt and was trying to, through some of our other things that we put out, educate an agency on what you can do and what you can't do involving funeral escorts. Okay. Um, so was that a direction from you? Yes. Okay. Are you aware of an email from General Counsel Austin Moore to Sergeant Midler in May of 2019, I know this is going back, uh, advising that there was nothing illegal about Metro State employees openly carrying pepper bug guns? I don't recall, but that was probably because of part of the discussion that we were having. Um, I don't recall that directly, but we did have discussions about um, I believe that Austin did not feel like it was a violation of Florida State statute, but we did have the continuing saga of knowing, in fact, whether it is a pepper ball gun or is it a firearm. Okay. Um, and that just because he carries the pepper ball gun today and we have identified it right. and we know it's a pepper ball gun, how do we know that tomorrow? It's the same pepper ball gun. So I can see the argument both ways. And that was one of the reasons that I told um, the sergeant and the corporal, let's let's teach patrol how this should be handled, A. And B, anytime y'all come in contact with Jeremy DeWitt from this point on, and I don't know what that date was, but my lieutenant was taking notes that day who's since retired, and he says he still has those notes. Um, I said, anytime in the future we come into contact with Mr. DeWitt, we will file with the state attorney that was, and I can't think of the guy's name, but we had a state attorney that was assigned to Mr. DeWitt. So okay. in the future, we will contact that state attorney before we make an arrest and we will file um, appropriate charges to be added to what was already a list of... Was I, that a directive by you? Yes. And when, when was that? Uh, I can't give you a date. I can say it was probably within the last year and that came, you know, there's always these conspiracy theories that somebody was shutting down the investigation. I didn't shut down. It's easy to use the term shutting down an investigation. We didn't shut down an investigation. What we did was ask them to get their paperwork together, get their case together, because that's what they were doing was working a case on Mr. DeWitt. Mm -hmm. Get the entire package put together by a certain date, um, and we're going to get that into the state attorney so they can do what they need to do. Okay, so the directives from you within the last year, just to be clear, yes. were to um, file yes. charges. Contact the state attorney's office and don't arrest Mr. DeWitt without contacting me. Okay. Because um, even in the last charge, I've heard very little about it, and I've stayed out of that because I don't need the stress. And you haven't been working. Yet. I haven't been working, but okay. there, if I had been working, Sergeant Midler would have called me because of that directive, and I would have said either call the state attorney and ask him whether we need to make an arrest or if we just file this with the other charges. Um, he even has, okay. I don't want to talk about that yet. Um, so are you aware of either in, in, from view, reviewing body cam video or anything else of uh, Sergeant Bendler in particular uh, interacting with Mr. DeWitt numerous times while Mr. DeWitt was wearing a body, or I'm sorry, wearing a pepper ball gun on his uniform? Are you aware of that? I know I've seen videos. I've watched videos to make sure that Sergeant Midler's tone um, was appropriate because people complain that he yells at them or what have you. So I've reviewed a lot of videos. Anything specific to um, him interacting, Sergeant Midler interacting with Mr. DeWitt? No, and I've heard. wearing a pepper ball gun in the past. No, past. and I purposely have not watched the latest videos. Okay. I'm just trying to understand if there's something that changed because there is video, numerous. Uh, times of Sergeant Midler and Mr. DeWitt interacting, and right. Mr. DeWitt has a pepper ball gun on his side um, in uniform, so I'm just trying to understand if there was anything that changed from those circumstances to um, this arrest. Not to my knowledge, but the direction was that it 
appears to be a pepper ball gun and if we know for a fact it's a pepper ball gun it's not a violation okay but again to the cops defense to the cop side of that you don't know from one day to another because that gun looks so similar to a handgun um, and, and Mr. DeWitt himself said that he wants to look like law enforcement to gain respect. That's why he carries that particular Has he weapon. said that to you or you he said that, that through the He said that in the video during the investigation. Okay, during the investigation. Yes. Okay. Um, and so you've mentioned a couple of times an ongoing investigation mm -hmm. involving Sergeant Bidler, Corporal Ramsey, right. uh, into Mr. DeWitt. Did you uh, assign this investigation no. to Sergeant Bidler? No. Um, you mean back in the very beginning? Correct. Um, I wouldn't say that I assigned it to him. Um, the way that the way that the investigation came about is when I first took over the motors unit. Um, I literally had just taken over. The traffic section and I was at McGuire and 50 and I heard sirens and yes I did hear sirens I know what I heard I remember the day and I thought our guys were running a motorcade or running a funeral escort that I hadn't been advised of and I walked out to the edge of highway 50 and McGuire Road to see what we were doing because it was apparent to me it were motorcycles or some type of escort the way they were they were doing a bump and run with their horns and with a siren and I walked out the edge of the road and I saw this group that I'd never seen before doing what we do in a presidential escort. And I wondered, who are they and what are they? And I saw Metro State Services. I saw a motorcycle pull into the intersection of McGuire and 50 and take over the intersection, just like we would during a presidential escort. And then that vehicle was relieved by a Chevy Tahoe that was black and white. Um, they held the intersection while the funeral went through the light, made the turn, and went over to, I believe, Woodlawn Cemetery. I called Sergeant Midler on the phone and I said, who's this group and why are they taking over intersections and doing what looks like a presidential escort, moving people off the road? Because they, in fact, moved people off the road. And I knew that they were in violation. Um, if they weren't truly a state agency, and I called Sergeant Bidler and he gave me the, the lowdown on who Metro State was and that they had been told to leave them alone, quote unquote. When was this? This is a good two to three years ago. Okay. Uh, when I first took over the unit. I mean, it was probably within my first month there. So whatever month I took over the traffic section is when um, I made that phone call okay. to Sergeant Bidler. So when I was told that we were told to leave it alone, I said, you cannot stand back and watch violation of Florida state statute and do nothing with it when it involves public safety. You took an oath um, to uphold those particular statutes. So um, I'm not telling you to go look for this group, but I'm saying in the future, that type of behavior, if y'all run across that, um, he needs to be dealt with when okay. he's in violation of Florida state statute. So you gave a, a directive to Sergeant Midler if, yes. if you run across them, can you see them? If you run across them, no. look at this group, um, we need to deal with Deep. them because they are doing illegal activity. Okay, so then this subsequent uh, ongoing investigation mm -hmm. um, initiated. Yes. And uh, so uh, would it be fair to say that Sergeant Bidler was sort of uh, the lead in that investigation? Yes, he was the expert and he schooled me. Okay. Even as a captain, because you don't, you know, you move from spot to spot. He schooled me on what Florida State statute said about funeral escorts okay. um, and confirmed for me that they were in violation of Florida State statute. Okay. So during that investigation, um, were you ever made aware of Sergeant Bidler contacting uh, insurance companies, private insurance companies? Uh, he reached, he reached out to the state. Um, he reached out to a state investigator who said that he was in violation because he didn't have insurance and because he did not have workers comp. Okay. That snowballed into having to reach out to other insurance companies to, to prove whether in fact he had insurance as a commercial carrier or were his vehicles just insured. 
Okay, is that common practice in the motor unit? Uh, to it's not well the. Um, one of the things that we did look at is the fact that the motors unit back then, we weren't actively working some of the things that we needed to be working, like the racer detail, um, the group that comes to town that does um, large scale motorcycle events during the day where they take over. You probably remember the one that went through uh, Edgewood where they pulled a woman out of her car. Okay. Those types of things were assigned to us and I was told we need to investigate those things more. The motor section doesn't do a lot of investigation. Okay. So. You were told to, that those needed to be investigated? Yes. Who, who, who told you that? Uh, Major Anzuego. Okay. When I, first, when I first came in, he asked me why we didn't do more investigations. Okay. And he, he suggested that you guys should do more investigations or? He suggested that we needed, we needed to up our game. We needed to do more than just go out and ride traffic tickets and do school crossings, okay. which, which was, to Major Ann's, what's Wado's defense? Our stats were low. We didn't really, um, we weren't producing the numbers that we, sh we could have been producing because of a lot of different factors. Um, just like with the DUI squad, when you got Uber and Lyft, DUI numbers went way, way down. Didn't mean my guys weren't working simply meant people were getting rides home for free. Okay. So as a, as a, as a practice in the motor unit, um, it's not actually a common practice to contact insurance companies. Is that what I'm getting? But that It wouldn't be a common practice except for the fact at some point you'd have to ask Keith which one came first, the chicken or the egg, but it would be once you talk to that insurance investigator who said, hey, he has to have commercial insurance, he has to have this rider, he has to have this policy, and it can't be for him individually. It has to be um, for a commercial company through a registered corporation. Okay. Um, were you ever aware of Sergeant Fiddler contacting uh, private businesses that are clients of Mr. DeWitt's companies? So Mr. DeWitt has uh, funeral escort companies that he works with and tow truck companies. Um, were you ever aware of Sergeant Fiddler contacting? Companies in regards to in, with the intention of no, not disrupting tow, his business, not tow truck companies, and not to disrupt the business. But he did, in fact, meet with um, he met with um, two things. He met with one. Um, shoot, funeral homes to find out if they were insured so that there was something to protect the citizen because we had we had allegations and we had evidence from a Winter Park case that his agency, his business, was involved in some vehicle accidents. And we were trying to determine, we, I wasn't, Sergeant Vidler was trying to determine whether in fact they had umbrella policies that would cover Mr. DeWitt's behavior because they hired Mr. DeWitt. If you follow what Do I'm saying. Do you know saying. what funeral home that was? Um, I want to say Dignity or Woodlawn is the is the one that jumps out at me. Okay. Um, the other side of that was um, funeral homes and uh, security companies. We reached out to we Sergeant Vidler was directed to reach out to Curtis Protective Services. Um, because I explained to Sergeant Vidler, I said, look, I've received two complaints on Curtis. So I don't want Jeremy DeWitt to feel like he's the only service in town that is looked at when they violate Florida State statute. You need to contact Mr. Curtis because I've been called twice now about, and in one case it was in the city of Orlando, them over, taking over a one-way street to go to a church that was right behind OPD headquarters. And that was unrelated to unrelated uh, to Mr. DeWitt's business. That was exactly. another investment. That is Curtis Protective Services, and we met with a man that's named, uh, they call him Chief, that owns the company. Okay. Um, so some of these things that I'm, I'm mentioning, and, and you kind of alluded to it, so mm -hmm. I just want to go back to it. Uh, the fact that it could be perceived that uh, because Sergeant Bedler and Corporal Ramsey were interacting with Mr. DeWitt, it could, one could perceive uh, mm -hmm. That that um, that they were being targeted, or that they that this was uh, somehow personal. Right. Um, uh, do you know of any ill will from Sergeant Vidler or Corporal Ramsey towards 
None what state or, or Mr. Dewitt? None whatsoever. And if you look at some of the videos that I had to review, um, you also you you almost hear a you do hear a mentoring from Sergeant Vidler in the very beginning stages of this thing to explain to Jeremy how to handle a funeral escort by statute and what he can do and he can't do. And they had those conversations on two or three different videos and I'm like, okay, we have to keep telling the same individual repeatedly how to do it lawfully. Um, then one of his employees provided us with a video where he basically said he knows what he's doing is illegal, but this is how they're gonna do it to get around the law or get around the statute which was kind of like the icing on the cake when you're trying to put a case together and you keep telling the same individual over and over and over again what the definition of Florida state statute is and he keeps going outside Florida state statute. Okay, and just to be clear, you know about these things because did Sergeant Bidler keep you updated on a regular basis? Um, he was directed at one point that if you deal with Jeremy DeWitt, you will make sure that I'm in the know and that I know what's going on uh, because it was it was becoming a little obvious to me that they were not going to the lieutenant with everything that they should have taken to the lieutenant. There were too many gaps. So at one point I said... If you, when you say lieutenant, you mean... Uh, the motorist lieutenant. Um, yeah, I've been, out, I've been gone since February. Uh, I can't believe that. Wacker? Wacker. Cal Wacker. Um, they weren't keeping Cal up to speed on everything that he needed to be up to speed on. And I said, from now on, you talk to Jeremy DeWitt about violation of Florida State statute, you call me. Okay. And so that kind of brings me to my next question. Um, did you give any orders? Uh, well, I think we established that you did give orders regarding um, the dealing with Mr. Metro State and Mr. DeWitt. So did you ever give any orders to uh, stop conducting a criminal investigation no. into Metro State? I, I, they were advised to wrap up an investigation, get it to the state attorney, get the charges filed, and let's get him arrested. When was that? I can't give you the date. It was it was a good year or a year and a half ago. I mean, it was... And there's an email out there that says you directed us to close or stop or something, the investigation that Jeremy DeWitt posted on his webpage. And that, that came from either Vidler or Ramsey. And that's not a factual. They were not ordered to stop an investigation. They were ordered to finish their investigation, get it to the state attorney, and let the state attorney file charges if he was going to. Okay. Uh, because we weren't getting follow up. Did you? Uh, were you aware if that took if that actually took place? Did they conclude their investigation? Yes, they concluded their investigation. Um, Did you give any? Were there any uh, standing orders um, after that regarding Metro State? Just to contact me if they came in contact with Mr. DeWitt for any reason that I needed to know what was going on so um, I could keep whoever my major was at the time, I could make sure the major was aware of it and nobody got blindsided. Because Mr. DeWitt would make allegations that were sometimes substantial um, about law enforcement. Okay. Um, and so those orders that you gave, did those come from someone else? Um, they didn't really come from somebody else, but uh, Major Anzuedo and myself talked, and I said in the future, when Major Anzuedo and I first met, I said to him, my job, I see my job as a captain is making sure you don't get blindsided. I will bombard you with emails or call you about events that occur so that when you sit down at the table on Monday or Friday, you know what's going on. Period. Okay. When it came to Mr. DeWitt, I doubly ensured that anything that we had involvement with, with Jeremy DeWitt, I could make sure the lieutenant or the uh, major was aware of so he didn't get blindsided. Okay. So I just want to be clear. So the, the orders uh, after after they were ordered to conclude their investigation, mm -hmm. um, the orders after that, were there any orders to not have any interaction with Metro State after that? No, to the contrary. They were told, if you see, don't go out looking for Jeremy DeWitt. We have other cases we have to work. We have other things that we have to focus on. Okay. We have presidential visits. We have vaccine sites. We have every, we have it all. But, and they were also told this by, to, to Major Anzuedo's credit, Major Anzuedo said, if Jeremy DeWitt pulls in front of me running an illegal escort, um, I'll take him to jail. I'm not saying don't take the guy to jail. Major Anzuedo never said that. He said, if you see him doing an escort okay. and they block an intersection right in front of you, take him to jail. 
So if you see him violating any state statutes, you can take action. Yes. Um, but uh, don't don't seek him to, the conclusion. Don't seek him out. And as a matter of fact, Keith, the direction was, if you have the opportunity to call patrol and let patrol take that case, tell patrol that he's wearing a what appears to be a firearm and that he's a convicted felon um, and let patrol deal with that. We had a point where he had a warrant for his arrest out of Osceola County and they thought that he might be coming up to Orange County for something and I said, you know what? Call Osceola County and tell him that he's got a warrant. He's now living in Osceola County from what we understood. Okay. Let Osceola County know they have a warrant in their county. And so that uh, that direction did that come from you to start a village? Yes. And do you remember when? No, roughly. I don't have any idea. I just know that he was he was picked up on that warrant a few days, two days after that. Okay. Um, and just to confirm, if it was prior to obviously you going out on leave. Yes, okay. it was probably uh, months before that. Okay. Six months or so. All right. Uh, is there anything else that you know about this investigation you'd like to add? Um, no, sir. Okay, the current time is 9.30 a.m. and that concludes this interview. All right. Huh? Huh? Whatever he told you, I can promise you isn't true. I knew he was lying. They're lying, Rania. They're fucking lying and they're putting on charges and charges on top of charges. There's, there's, there's...